What is up guys, Tanner here with another video. Hope you're all having a great day. In this one, we got a special video. We may even do a little series on this. Mythbusters. Me and my boy Noah right here, he owns a big Facebook ads agency where they scale stores from whether it's four figures to five figures or five figures to six or six to seven, whatever it is. They know what they're doing and they spend a lot of time on it and they've helped me make some money. And before we get into this video guys, I wanna make a quick announcement. My new course is launching August 1st. I've been flying in young entrepreneurs all over the country and even the world for the past two weeks just to film content for you guys for my new course. I'm super excited to share with you guys. You guys are gonna learn a lot about marketing, not just dropshipping, but marketing overall. So stay tuned for that. So in this video, we're gonna be going over some myths and how we are gonna bust them. I don't know if you guys have seen the show, but we're gonna sort of strategize it around that. We're gonna be talking about these things that people think about product testing and why that is not true. So we're gonna go ahead and hop in here and I'm gonna be saying what the myth is and then Noah's gonna be going over and explaining why those are not true. So the first one we got here is you need to build data in order to make sales or optimize for purchases on Facebook ads. So that is false and I'm going to let Noah give the reasoning for it. All right. So we're talking about optimizing for purchases. Like a lot of people talk about you need to engage for, I mean, you need to optimize for engagements, video views, you know, when you're, when you're just starting out and uh, it's just never something that I've done. Um, you know, people think that you need to build a lot of data before you optimize for conversions. And it's just not true. You know, you can optimize for purchases right out the gate. Um, I've done it thousands of times. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, it, it always works. So, yeah, yeah. It's just cold testing. You yeah. ready for the next one? Yeah, let's go. The next one is certain states convert better than others or are more expensive than others. So you should exclude them with your targeting. So basically what it means by this is that you should remove certain states and stuff like that when targeting for conversions on Facebook ads. And that is also false. Why is that? Yeah, I mean, so many people, they just come to me like when I tell them to target like the United States or something, they come to me like, should I, should I exclude like California and all this other stuff? And it just doesn't like, it doesn't resonate with me because like I'm in so many different ad accounts with so many different products. Like I, I could understand like if, if for one product, it, you know, California doesn't sell too well. Um, you might want to say that, but like I, ch I, I already went through all my data and there's no particular state. Um, that I can like consider bad, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, they're, like, they're all working. It really like variates on the product and yeah. the interest and all that kind of stuff. So like, and that may be the case for one person, but definitely not for everybody. Understand that when people are saying like, this is the this is the sort of advice that people give when they've only grown like one or two stores. Um, they haven't seen like 10, 15, 20 stores like I have. So they don't really know what works for the majority. They only know what works for like one or two. So yeah, the, you know, just target, like if you're targeting the US, like don't exclude certain states, like it just doesn't yeah. make any sense. So the next one we have here says, select people who live in this location. So when you're targeting the locations on Facebook ads, it'll say target people who live in this location or everybody in this location. And no one's gonna be given the reason why it is false that you need to select people who live in this location. Okay, so this is, this is like more of a thing that, um, it's just how I was taught. Like it was just never that big enough of a concern for me to even like think about it. Um, you know, a lot of people say that you should do people who live in this location because I'm not going to fly to Europe and then ship something back to the United States. But like, this is just something that I've never done. The difference that it makes is not like, it's not even worth like clicking the button. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's not going to like make your CPP go up. It, it's, it's not a big deal. Yep. Um, and plus if, if your retargeting is on worldwide, which it should be, um, if they click the ad, you know, even if they are traveling, you can retarget them when they're back home, you know? So it's just... You know, I, I mean, just don't do it. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Yep. And the next one we have is you need to select Wi-Fi only. I see this one all the time with different people online saying you should only run ads when people are on Wi-Fi. So basically when you're going in and setting up the ad, you can select a button where it'll show only the ad to people when they're connected to Wi-Fi. And we're here to tell you why you should not do that. Look, this is, this is controversial because it makes sense, right? Like it makes sense. Somebody wouldn't want to buy something if they're just on data. Um, which is like the cellular network on their phone. But like, listen, you're trying to like, you're always trying to get data. If they're interested in the product, it doesn't matter if they're on cellular data or not. They're scrolling through Facebook. You know what I mean? Like they're not going to scroll through Facebook if they're trying to save on their cellular device. You know what I mean? So, yeah. um, and plus if they do click that ad and they're just like, oh, I don't want to buy this because I'm not on Wi-Fi, which for some crazy reason, if somebody yeah. thinks that, um, you hit them later with the retargeting when they are on Wi-Fi. So yeah. it just doesn't make any sense yeah. to me. Always do that. Leave it unselected for Wi-Fi only because you'll reach a lot more people and get more money. Yeah, more data. Yep. So. And the next one we have is when targeting worldwide, people tell you you should exclude these specific countries here, which are third world countries. And this one is true. 
This yeah. is not a myth buster. This is a myth. I don't know what to call it. But this is actually one that is true. Yeah, I mean, this is something that I always do. Like when I'm doing product testing, I put it on worldwide. And a lot of people ask me for this list, so I put it on screen just for you. Um, but yeah, I always exclude these. Um, the reason is because these countries, and there's a couple others that I don't exclude because they don't usually target. Um, but they, they'll drive like a ton of traffic and uh, they just don't convert. Like, you know those questions that people are always asking, like why do I have like 4,000 sales but none of them purchase? Like it's mostly because they didn't exclude these countries. You know, like they just put it on worldwide. And Facebook is smart. Like if you're optimizing for like link clicks and you drive an ad on worldwide, it's going to automatically show it to the people that are going to click the link for the cheapest, right? Mm -hmm. Which it's going to be these countries. It's going to be Bangladesh, Indonesia. Which, the data is just useless. Yeah. So, and it's actually going to hurt your retargeting and, and your lookalikes and yeah, stuff. Yeah, it would just essentially be a waste of money and it won't optimize it as well if you don't remove those countries. And the next one we have is... You should start with cheap products to build data before moving on to higher margin products. So a lot of people think when they start drop shipping, look, I need to sell these $10 items, $20 items, just so I can get some data and figure out what I need to sell next. But that is not the case. Selling higher ticket items is always the best way to go. Right, yeah. I, I just wanted to put this on this list because this actually used to be something that I used to follow. Like this, is, this, is, this was part of my strategy, um, you know, in the beginning of the year, like a little bit before then. Um, and what we would do to, is we would tell people like, you know, test $20 products when you're just starting out because it's going to be hard for you to sell. But like as soon as I started moving into the higher margin space, I started noticing that it didn't make a single difference um, whether you're selling a $20 product or a $90 product. Um, you know, I, I put on the screen here, like I've tested $90 products with no previous data on a brand new store. Um, and in the past month and a half, it's done 15K profit. Um, you know, I put profit because I didn't want to just say sales. I wanted to say profit too, like straight up after ad spend, after product cost, um, processing fees, refunds, all of that. Um, it was around 45k in sales, and that was with no data. Like we just we we started it out and made sales, um, ninety dollar product, sixty dollar margin, and it just took off. So it's a crazy I mean, margin. Yeah, it was Solid. beautiful. And the next one we have here is that. People tell you that you should have higher budgets for your ad sets and campaigns when you're selling a higher ticket item, but that honestly does not really matter. Yeah, the strategy that I follow, um, I, I always test with a $5 budget. Um, even like, look, even an, even the $60 margin, um, it'll make a sale in its first couple days. If it's a good product, like people will see the ad and they'll just click purchase. Like the, the amount of sales that you make is rarely relative to how many people see the ad. And that's what changing the budget is. Like it basically just shows it to more people. Um, I mean, people raise the budgets to make sales quicker, yeah. but it doesn't mean that it's not going to sell at a five dollar budget. Um, yeah. And I learned that by because five dollar budgets is pretty much all that I do, even even with higher ticket products. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people try and spend more money if they're not getting sales, just to try and get sales quicker. But sometimes at least uh, you know not making money, getting a super high cost for purchase that's unprofitable. Really, it's just about being patient and letting the ads run by themselves and optimize to see which ad sets are performing best and creating everything like that. The next one we have is that you should not test a product that has over 5,000 orders. So what I mean by this is basically when you're on AliExpress searching for products, you can sort it by orders to see how many orders each product has, which one has the highest. And a lot of people think you should not sell a product that has over 5,000 orders, but that is not true. Why is that? So, I mean, I don't like before a campaign is profitable, I rarely spend more than 150 bucks. So like this whole, this whole like thing, like even if it is saturated, you're not going to lose a lot of money on it just by putting it out there. So now that we got that out of the way, um, I've had plenty of saturated products like go off and do multi five figures. Um, they go off and do six figures, which I mean, you might not be able to scale it to like multi six figures, you know, whatever I've, you know, I've never really taken like a truly saturated product to multi six figures. Um, but I have six figures and for most people, um, you're not really worried about doing more than that, especially if you're just starting out. Um, so even if it's saturated, it, it's enough to put you in a position to be able to um, have money. You know, like just get your first cash flow business in. You know what I mean? Yep. Um, and five thousand orders. I mean, it's really not that many. Like you think about how many people are in the world. Oh yeah, five thousand uh, is nothing. And even even ten thousand. I just put five thousand because that's like the the magic number that I hear people talking about. But even ten thousand orders, like just put it out there and see how it does. Yep. Um, and if it has, you know, if it has a higher margin, especially put it out there. Um, because, you know, another thing that you need to keep in mind is AliExpress is like an eBay or Amazon for China. So those 5,000 orders could have came from just like me, you know, you, whoever. 
it might not have been a drop shipping product yet. You know what I mean? So um, keep that in mind as well. So that's great for this video, guys. Giving you guys some product testing myths and busting them and telling you guys why these things that people tell you are not true and how you can solve these problems by yourself. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. We're going to make some more of these. Make sure you go follow Noah on Instagram. I'll put his links below. Go check him out. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Peace.